The movie opens at a big party where a teen named Cole is looking through a crowded house for his little brother, Ducky. A stranger informs him that his brother is out of control, and Cole notices that Ducky has locked himself in a room, so he breaks the door open. He finds a shirtless, wounded Ducky talking to himself and starts to take him home. When Cole spots everyone recording the scene on their phones, he gets upset and yells at them to stop. But out of nowhere, Ducky instantly stabs Cole. He then goes outside and stabs himself in the eye to the shock of the other party goers. The following day, we see Mia, a 17-year-old high school student. Mia is struggling with the two-year anniversary of her mom's passing. She believes her mom died of an accidental overdose and is upset with her dad, Max, so she doesn't talk to him much after what happened. Later that evening, Mia goes to pick up Riley from his friend's house. Riley is a younger brother to her best friend, Jay. Since her mother's passing, Mia has been staying at Jade's house because her family is the only thing that can bring her happiness and hope when she is at the lowest point in her life. Mia and Jay get wind of a party on social media hosted by two teens, Haley and Joss. Rumor has it, they're experimenting in some creepy, dark stuff with the partygoers, but Mia's best friend Jay thinks everything is an elaborate scheme. Mia wants to see for herself, so Jay decides to go only because her boyfriend Daniel will be there, together with her younger brother Riley. All three of them sneak out and head to the party. They finally make it to the party, and there we meet Jay's boyfriend, Daniel, who turns out to be Mia's ex-boyfriend. They are still friends, even though they used to be together. Sometime later, Haley and Josh introduce them to the game that everyone loves. This game is called Talk To Me. The center of attention is this embalmed hand from a medium, and it's got some weird writing on it. The game's pretty simple. You hold the embalmed hand, light a candle, and say the words, talk to me. That's supposed to summon a demon or a ghost, but only the person holding the hand can see it. Then, that person says, I let you in, and suddenly, they're possessed by a demon. Mia lifts her hand and volunteers to be the one who gets possessed first. Haley, the host, gives her a heads up that the connection needs to be cut short within 90 seconds by blowing out the candle in order to prevent the spirits from binding themselves to that person. Mia starts by holding the embalmed hand and saying, talk to me, and then sees the ghastly image of an old man which initially scares her. Jade is hesitant to let Mia continue the game, but she regains her composure from Haley. Mia repeats holding the hand, and she meets with the terrifying sight of a weird-looking woman. This time, Haley encourages her to say, I let you in, and once she says it, the spirit enters her body. Soon enough, she starts to act frantically, speaking in a spooky, menacing tone. She points her finger towards Jade's younger brother, Riley, and says they really like you. Door creaks open on its own, and when the timer reaches 83 seconds, Josh tries to pull Mia away from the hand before the 90 second mark, but the demon doesn't want to let the hand go and yells at Riley to run. Eventually, Haley and Josh manage to sever Mia's connection with the spirit, even though it's going a tad bit over the 90 second mark. Once they've returned home later that night, Riley approaches Mia and asks how it feels to be possessed by a spirit, to which Mia replies that it felt amazing. She could hear, see, and feel everything while smiling. Mia has such a great time being possessed by the demon that Jade's boyfriend Daniel decides he wants to give it a go. Haley agrees to Jade's request, and they'll be doing this at Jade's house that night. They gathered in Jade's house, waiting for Haley and Josh to begin the spirit summoning game. Daniel immediately sits in front of the embalmed hand, reciting talk to me, and I let you in, that causes him to be possessed. Funny thing is, Whoever or whatever possesses Daniel insults Jade and turns him on sexually. While Daniel is dry humping the floor, Jade's dog comes over and Daniel licks his mouth in a weird sexual manner. This sight both disgusts and delights the other teens so they immediately blow out the candle. However, none of them are satisfied, so they all agree to give it another try that same very night. Thankfully, Jade's mom, Sue, is gone for the night. When Riley asks if he can have a turn, Jay says no since the game is too dangerous and the others agree because he's very young. As a result, Jade and Riley have an argument and Jade leaves the room for a brief moment. Riley then pleads with Mia to give him a chance, so Mia tells Riley he can give it a try but only for 50 seconds, not the whole 90. Hearing this, the boy agrees and is so excited that he goes through the procedure. The boy recites what he has to say while Haley sets the timer on and he immediately gets possessed. To everyone's surprise, Riley appears to be possessed by Mia's deceased mother, and things get a bit extreme. At first, her mom is saying sweet and heartfelt things, talking about how much she misses her. The other teens want to end the connection after 50 seconds, but Mia begs for more time to talk with her supposed mom. As the time limit slowly ticks away, the other teens attempt to cut the connection, but then 
things take a dark turn. The spirit controlling Raleigh suddenly turns violent, slamming his head onto the cabinet. It takes Jay and the others some effort to finally remove the hand from Raleigh's possession. Raleigh is in bad shape and needs immediate medical attention, so he is taken to a hospital. Everyone is speechless over the tragedy and at a loss for words when the police arrive to investigate what happened. Feeling guilty for having Raleigh join them, Mia decides to pack all of her things and return to her dad's house. When Mia attempts to visit Raleigh at the hospital, both Jade and Sue turn her away, blaming her for what has happened to Raleigh. The mother, Sue, tells Mia to go home and threatens her with calling the cops if she returns. But as she's about to leave, she spots her mother's reflection in the window. The mother figure leads her to the toilet where she hears her mother's voice asking for help. When she looks inside, no one is there. Following that strange occurrence, Mia starts spending more time with her ex-boyfriend Daniel and it's apparent that Mia still has deep feelings for Daniel. Mia thinks that her mother may be attempting to contact her despite Daniel telling her that he didn't think Riley's spirit was her mother. Later that night, as Daniel sleeps over, Mia is woken up by a nightmare and then abruptly, she sees the spirit of an old woman move towards Daniel and sucks on Daniel's foot. Afraid, she desperately yells at him to wake up, but Daniel wakes up to a discovery. It's Mia who's the one sucking on his foot. As a result, Daniel is creeped out and decides to leave the house right away. After he leaves, Mia appears to have taken the hand for herself and sets up a candle to attempt to communicate with her mother's spirit. Her mom, Rhea, finally appears, and Mia can't hold back her burning question any longer. Did her mom's overdose happen by accident, or did she take her own life? Her mom's spirit reassures her that it was truly an accident, and she would never have willingly left Mia. The spirit then shares that R Riley is in pain and urgently needs help. Over at the hospital, Jade is trying her best to assist Riley, but he's still under the possession and ends up biting her. He then falls on the floor, banging his head against the wall in the bathroom. The demon inside him is trying to harm him, but unfortunately, the doctor intervenes and controls the situation. Fast forward to the next day, Mia is seen teaming up with Daniel, Haley, and Josh as they set out to find Cole, the guy we first saw in the opening shot. We learn that Josh gets the hand from Duckett, who we saw kill himself at the beginning. They then meet Cole, who blames Joss for always inviting Duckett, his late brother, to play the demonic game. Cole then goes on to say that the longer the spirit stays in Raleigh, the weaker they become, so it's best to just wait it out. Mia, worried that time is running out for Raleigh, comes up with a plan. Her plan is to make Raleigh finish the game, because she thinks they forgot to blow out the candle during his possession. So, she goes to the hospital in an attempt to get the spirits to repossess Raleigh, but it's unsuccessful. Mia then decides to enter the spirit realm to rescue Raleigh's soul, which she believes is being held captive by the spirits. Suddenly, in a vision, she encounters the spirit of the little girl and pleads with the girl to bring her to Raleigh. The girl then says she lets Mia in and reveals that Raleigh is being tormented by many other violent spirits in limbo. When she regains consciousness, she tells her friends that the spirits are not gonna stop her in Raleigh. Once Mia returns home, Max, her father, approaches her and says he wants to reveal the truth about her mother's passing. He apologizes for not telling her sooner and shows Rhea's suicide note confirming that her death was not an accident. Devastated and in tears in her room, Mia sees Rhea's spirit. And then Mia hears her father banging on her door and the mother claims that Max wrote the note as a lie and says that the spirit is imitating Max while the father is seen in an adjacent room. Rhea also insists that Riley can only be saved if he dies. Here, the spirit who imitates her father Max enters the room and is violently attacking her. The actual Max can hear the commotion from the other room and finds Mia's door is locked, so he breaks down the door to check on her. Just as Mia attempts to stab the spirit attacking her, she ends up accidentally stabbing her real father in the neck with scissors. Later, Mia calls Jay and tells her to come to her house as she knows what to do, but it turns out that she tricks Jay into leaving the hospital while she herself goes there to finish Riley. But then, Jay's mother Sue shows up and apologizes for what she said previously. She reassures Mia that she was never to blame for what happened to Riley, and she allows Mia to be alone with Riley for a few minutes. Now almost entirely under the influence of the demonic spirits, Mia becomes convinced that the only way to save Riley is by killing him, believing it will end his suffering. So she attempts to kill Riley with the same scissors, but she can't just bring herself to go all the way through with it. Meanwhile, Jade, who comes to Mia's, can't find her anywhere, but instead, she finds her father in critical condition. Jade quickly calls an ambulance and quickly alerts her mother, warning her that Mia poses a threat to Riley. 
Sue then rushes to Riley's hospital room, but her son has left with Mia. When Jay returns to the hospital, she sees Mia pushing Riley in a wheelchair in a distance and quickly chases after her. Mia decides to push the boy to the side of a busy highway intended to end his misery. In her hallucination, she sees him as an old, decaying spirit. Rhea's spirit tries to persuade Mia to push Riley into the oncoming traffic, so she removed her hands from Riley's wheelchair, causing the oncoming car to collide with something in the road. We then see Mia lying in the middle of the road, as if she's the one who was hit by a car and badly injured. When she regains consciousness on the street, Mia sees Jay taking care of Riley by the roadside. All of a sudden, she finds herself in a hospital, but everything seems weird and strange. Riley appears to have made a full recovery and is leaving with Jade and Sue. Max also seems to have healed from his injuries, but as Mia tries to follow them, nobody can hear or see her. Everyone leaves, ignoring her desperate cries for them not to leave her all alone. Then she finds herself in pitch black darkness. Out of nowhere, she notices a faint glimmer of light. Curious, she heads towards it and realizes it's a candle and there is a hand extended from it. She moves to grab the hand and then she is transported to a completely different place, at a party, and the guy holding her hand looks at her in shock before uttering, I let you in. This means that Mia is now a part of the game, but now that she's dead, she's the spirit. If you made it this far in the video, smash that like button and comment down below what was your favorite scene from the movie. Before you leave, click on the video on your screen. Thanks for watching my video.